So we'll start the recording and we try to fly. So today we're going to, let's see if we can see, yep, okay. Today we're going to um, keep going with some uh, physics in everyday life. So some of the things that we maybe take it for granted, but they're there and they have some physical principle and actually um, they have a key role even in some of the objects that we don't think um, uh, that we don't think of and we will see like several little applications after refreshing some of the concepts and in particular today <clears throat> we're gonna look about uh, to uh, talk about the uh, magnet or some magnetic effect uh, as well as electricity okay which is something that we take it for granted and uh, and they're there but uh, <clears throat> obviously, <clears throat> instead, not the electricity, but uh, looking, let's start with the magnetic properties. Those are like well known since uh, several years. And because we do have some minerals, the magnetite, for example, that are magnetized permanently. So they work as a magnet. They are a magnet. And um, the magnet is characterized to be uh, formed by two poles. So we have a bar of this material. So in this particular case, we're talking something that is naturally magnetized. And we will see even how this property actually can give us some hints on the um, understanding of our planet. But we will uh, get into it in a little moment. And uh, so we have to imagine a bar that in this particular picture is uh, schematized in uh, just this bar with two colors. And those, uh, there are two different poles. And usually we know this by fact, that we do have two poles uh, into a magnet. And they do have different properties. And uh, um, so in general, those we call that bar a dipole because it has two Holds. And uh, this, in here it says, like, they have opposite flavor. So they actually are acting differently. And we know, in fact, that if we place two different, two magnets and different poles, they eventually attract and they immediately, plum, they go together. And there are like a lot of games for children that are like less common now because they play more with the magnetic inside their their stuff. But uh, <clears throat> and at the same time, if we don't place them in contact or very close to it, not necessarily in contact, by but uh, in the wrong way, we see that they start not to. And there is no way. Doesn't matter if I'm strong enough or big enough, there is no way that I can make them touching. And they repel. And we will see this, uh, why it's happening. It's happening because what we need to consider is what we call the magnetic field. In general, what's a field in our context, okay? In our, when we talk about magnetic field, a field in general, like a magnetic field, electrical field, gravitational field, is that region of the space that we can consider if we do have something generated that field, generating that field, in which if we play something, that stuff that we place will be reacting due to this field. So at the end of the day, they are kind of forces, let's say in inverted comma. Okay? What does it mean? Like, uh, let's try to visualize something with the um, gravitational field, right? We know that we do have a gravitational field. And if I have this object, and recording, so they know that we're making the experiment. <laughs> exactly. The earth pulling, right? So it's because the object that I'm using for the experiment is actually re 
subject to the field, the gravitational field. For, and what happens? What we need to also consider and eventually get familiar with, that if we are far away, so if we take the same object far away, this gravitational pull will be less and less and less. At a certain point, this gravitational pull will be not uh, active anymore, and this will not uh, come down. So the far we move away from the center, from the generating body that is uh, actually generating this field, uh, the less intense this is going to be. Okay, so the attraction in this particular case will be less and less, um, obviously considering always the two objects that, uh, that we are referring to. The same goes for the magnetic field, and we'll see that the same goes even with the electric, uh, electrical um, field. So in general, the uh, magnetic field, like if we want to have a schematic view of the magnetic field, if we do have a magnet like this, okay, the magnetic field is uh, starting from one of the poles and then going into the other. Okay, so it's quite intense nearby, and then as you can see, the lines in this schematic, the lines will get rarer and with uh, further distances from each other. So it means that if we're moving away from that object, we will feel less the interaction with that particular object, okay? And um, this is uh, similar also the way we schema the magnetic field of our planet, and we will see this uh, later on. But this schematic view actually comes from the reality. Before we go to this, uh, let's go to this one. This is actually an experiment that can be done uh, even with um, kind of easy to do with very little powder, let's say, of uh, metallic uh, powder, like um, uh, piece, little pieces of iron and so on. So actually you could have like a glass or something, you will place like your magnet underneath and your this powder, this metallic powder on top. And then if you place the bar, you can see here, so you'll try to get the pointer, let's see if it works. Yep, no, <laughs> sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But you see the, um, the bar there. Again, we do have north and south, and actually it resembles what the schematic uh, we, present, we were presenting a uh, few um, uh, seconds ago. This is exactly the same story, but it's a little bit more complicated because we are getting a bar and actually bend it. Okay, so the two poles, instead, to be, instead of being far away from each other, they are towards each other. And as you can see, we do have more powder, more black lines at the center there than in the other places. So it means that in that particular location, that um, the magnetic field is much more powerful than uh, other places, right? And we see this even in the movies, in the cartoons, right? When they have this uh, big magnets able to attract and they just put that flashing, uh, that flashing. So, um, Exactly, and they're concentrating like there because there we have the major number of lines going out from one and then sending to the other. Okay, yes, sir. Instead of seeing it by the microscope, we see it by spraying. First, we spray a uh, conductive spray by paper. Right. Then we spray fragments, iron fragments, 
then we take two magnets, place them on the steel, right. where there is, assuming that there is the crack, and they divide, and you can see it with your bare eyes. Yes, exactly. That's a, take a photo. Exactly. And that's a, actually a, one of the applications that it's non invasive as well. Because so you can uh, see where the points of failure eventually it's going to be, and then you take it. And there are like several other techniques that eventually can be used. But there's a very nice, thanks, a very nice application of the of this little simple um, uh, concept. <laughs> yes, exactly. A cheap, the cheapest is the word. Like in the industry, cheapest is the is the key factor. But in general, like we do have also magnetic fields for our planet, right? We know that our planet has a magnetic field. This magnetic field has a certain features. And actually, we can use and make use of those features. And uh, the most common use that we do have using this magnetic uh, feature of the magnetic field is the compass. Right, which is long known now. Obviously, when we say long known, not that long, no, more than our lifetime, but uh, very like a few hundred of years before they used like to navigate just um, with the stars, the sun, and whatever they could have in order to uh, orient themselves. And obviously, this starts in creating some problems in going in the southern hemisphere because the portion of the sky that we see is different. So the positions, even of the stars, will look like a little bit different. But in general, the magnetic field, is, it has the same kind of approximation that we had at the, um, uh, in the previous example. So we said that the compass is one of the is this instruments actually that can be used um, to make to make use of this gravitational field. So it just it's uh, made of a small dipole magnet, which is free to rotate. In fact, if we look at a compass, there is also that needle that is not steady; it's always shaking because. The friction should be minimized and the point of contacts are very, very little between the place where the needle is attached and eventually free to rotate. Okay, so this needle obviously is magnetized just for matter of uh, simplicity. We do have one portion with one side with a different color than the other. And usually it aligns up with the magnetic field. Right? Why do I say usually? Because obviously we need to be in the conditions in which the magnetic, we don't have a much more powerful magnetic field to actually um, uh, interfere with that. And uh, in my particular case, I had this to learn uh, that I have always to remind this. Okay. And um, because um, once I sent one student into the field, like with a small uh, piece of instrument, which has a big magnet, and the student knew that inside there was a magnet, right? So for me, it was granted. You have a magnet inside because uh, the way this uh, instrument was engineered and manufactured, and uh, and they had to take some measurements, but the instrument had to be oriented in a particular direction towards the north. So in order to do that, he got a compass with him. So the poor guy actually had to go to the field once again, because in order to make, according to him, the measurements precise enough or as accurate as possible to make me happy, right? He, he actually pissed me off. <laughs> and I will tell you why for two reasons. Because he was making, he was putting the compass very close on the instrument. So actually the, the stuff was interfering with that, giving a wrong direction. 
So it was happy. So I did it like this and say, oh gee, let's see what happens. So he plot everything on a on a map, and those things were completely scattered. I was pissed off for two reasons. The first which okay, you don't know how the you don't remember how the instrument has been constructed, so it's all right. But damn it, use your brain, right? Because if you are from that particular certain location, you know that the north should be whatever, towards that direction or towards the if you're getting something wrong, it's not because you're reading, there would be something wrong. So use your judgment. And uh, it didn't check, you know. Exactly, exactly. But that's uh, sometimes uh, things that we take for granted and not always uh, that. The, no, there's, no, no, they're still, yes, 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 they're still used and they're still working. Then it depends on the application because for, Yes, exactly. Uh, but uh, but the important thing is having the solution. <laughs> but yes, yes, please. Always be careful not to place an ATM card, Visa, those cards that are covered with brown. You are the bar. You are anticipating like a couple of slides, but no, but that's that's true. Near exactly, and uh, and I'm sure that as we go along, you will recall some of the pictures that I'm going to show you. And no, no, but that, no, no, that's fine. It's uh, it's actually, but that's the reason. This is with the instrument, but then in a, in every uh, single things that we, that we do, the same like. Um, in several movies, they have. Um, you ruined the card, and and we will see. And now we'll see why. But for example, like this um, interaction with the compass, with of the compass with the environment, has to be taken in consideration. Sometimes they have these adventure movies in which they have this. Um, uh, you know, they're lost somewhere. And so now they're they're not doing it anymore with the actually uh, maps printed, right? But they used to come out with these big maps and places on place on the on the car, like on the roof of the car or like on the engine compartments, whatever, and then placing the compass on top of it, right? But if you have ferromagnetic stuff and so on, you just but in the movies they will get their way their way anyway. But uh, that's something uh, to consider in general. Okay, and um, so we do have uh, some uh, examples in the past in which they were like uh, quite back in time in which they were starting actually to use this uh, uh, compass and uh, in that part of the world they were actually designing even first uh, objects that for our society are modern now and they're like 100 years old such as seismometers for example but they were already they understood uh they cannot measure things but at least understood from where something was uh, coming from and um the first known references is um uh, in the uh 1200 end of uh, 1200 in which um they had this copy but actually the use of it came um, more in uh, in place later on I like a wider use so that's what actually maybe you are uh, you were referring to and then this map over here we can see that the uh, magnetic north pole it's migrating Okay, so we need continuous adjustment and it's migrating. This is bottom of this uh, picture is in the 1945 and then about 50 years later, it moved of about four, uh, six, uh, 74 to 80. So we're talking about um, 600 
the, sorry, uh, six degrees, that means a little bit more than 600 uh, kilometers. No, we don't actually know why we don't have the magnetic field. And actually it's not even moving, but through times that are longer than this, is actually flipping over, okay? We don't know exactly why this is happening, but the most, yes, sir. There's it's not that stupid. It's uh, it's very clever, but I don't have the answer. So, <laughs> so no, I I mean, north obviously we get that as a uh, as a reference. Okay, so the way we schematize this is just having a bar, so it can be placed in any direction. So most probably this has to do even with the uh, rotation because the the stuff yes because actually yes and the inertia inside and the movement inside are actually what are causing some currents that eventually are creating the magnetic field. Now the mechanism. No. No. The north is just because in our lifetime, the north has been always in that direction, so we'll take that. But actually, we do have evidences that the magnetic poles have been flipped over. So whatever it's... Now, why is this happening? We don't know. And in particular, when I say we don't know, I don't know. <laughs> but, but as far as I know, there is no uh, consensus or an actual explanation why this is happening. So we don't know enough yet about our planet, but this is literally flipping over. So it's moving. Yes. Uh, I don't know, but that, certainly it's a kind of complex matter in which several actors are playing a role. But this flipping is documented and is documented in the rocks, okay? Not the man, just the magnetic material, but in every kind of rocks, especially the volcanic rocks. What's happening is the following. We saw in some previous lecture what happens at the mid-oceanic ridge, right? We don't have this place in the mid-oceanic ridge in which we don't have thinnering of the crust. The crust is the external part of the planet which is the solid and the colder, right? Then right underneath, there is the mantle, okay? Which is this chewy material and uh, made of fluid drops, okay? So they are very high temperature. And in the middle of oceanic ridge, the crust, the oceanic crust is thin enough and the movements are going, are happening in such a way that the crust is actually mm -hmm. fracturing the two portions are moving far away from each other. But if this one is fracturing and we don't have this hot material, this hot material is rising up and we do have a series of volcanoes in the middle. Uh, and why it's, it's a different story though. No, and why is a different story? And that will tell you in a minute. So in the mid oceanic ridge, we do have this ring of fire, it's called, because we don't have volcano activities from north down to south, cutting basically in the middle the uh, Atlantic Ocean. When new, so new magma is rising up, what happens is that all the atoms and molecules inside are randomly oriented, okay? So their dipoles are randomly oriented. And when they cool down, and so when they get to then they do have a north let's schematize like as in an arrow and each of them they have a north and a magnetic pole okay and they're like a bunch of, of them okay so like us pointing in every direction right we we'll stay like this with our arms open and we start pointing at different directions but at a certain point i don't know I'm just guess, like staying a stupidity. Someone very important comes in and we start aligning up, looking at him with our arms in 
every or uh, every one of us in the same directions. That's what happens in the rocks, in this these little magnetic poles, in which they are aligning up because something stronger than them is taking place, right? And it's actually taking over. And that's the magnetic field that force all these little arrows that are randomly oriented to stay everyone in the same direction. Well, the magnetic pulse is there, so everything stays aligned up, but so they will align up according to the magnetic field of that particular moment. Okay, so now the rocks that are forming are aligned up north-south because we think, we know that north-south is, um, is the magnetic uh, field that we don't have now. And they start cooling down. Once they cool down, temperature will go down and freezes, obviously inverted comma, freezes the situation and they keep permanently a record of that magnetic of the, of the magnetic field at that time. Okay. If when they formed, the magnetic field has been opposite. So the south is in the north place and vice versa. They record the magnetic field of that particular moment. The only way to mix or to change the magnetic field in those rocks, it will be eating them up again. Okay, that obviously it's not going to happen unless you have volcanic activity on a large. Uh, so, in general, they start. Uh, drilling, let's say, and taking samples from the mid-oceanic ridge towards Africa and the, from the mid-oceanic ridge towards South America. And they saw that it's specular. So about at the same distance, you had about the same kind of um, magnetic signature. So it means that over time, not only those things have been moved, moving apart, but also the magnetic fields as uh, has changed. So this is another evidence of what we call the plate tectonics and how the planet works. But it ex it's explained with the variation of the magnetic field. Uh, and then <laughs> and then you reverse it and then go on the other side. Likely, yes, but likely doesn't happen that often, but it does. And do we think this could be a problem for the planet? It problem. Yes, it's a problem. Not in our lifetime again, because it doesn't change in our lifetime, or when we say even like our lifetime, uh, even as a human beings, right? But in general, there are like several organisms that actually use magnetic senses. So, we do have um, birds, bees, uh, uh, whales, and several other animals that actually feel about this magnetic. Uh, so a variation, of course, will uh, affect, on, could affect migration processes and stuff. But if we do have that kind of change, it's not a rapid change. The problem with our planet is not the fact that it's changing because this has been going over since ever. It's always something that is not static. We see it being static, right? But if we go back a few um, <laughs> million years, but even less, even few thousand of years, like may, we would see like the landscape completely different, right? Obviously this will affect the living objects, but it's so gradual that eventually everyone will adapt to the best of their possibilities to the new environment. The problem is when we change things so rapidly. Okay? Uh, yes, exactly. Time is a major problem. Exactly, indeed. And, and was not even desert. 
And yes. The mass of the earth is getting lighter. Every moment is getting lighter. Every second is getting lighter. Because the oil and the, the fossil oil it ev evaporates. It doesn't stay on the earth. Yes, and we're using and it as well. <laughs> and the density and the mass changes the mobility of the circle. Yes, yes, no, indeed, it's not just this, but a lot of these factors actually are, they play a role. And then when we start adding one ingredient to another, then we make the whole. Yes, ma'am. No, it's just uh, one. Yes, it's just one magnetic field. So we do get the entire planet and consider them being like a very huge and very large magnet. And the magnetic fields is all around. Now, these magnetic fields, um, we'll see. Mm -hmm. it's, yes, exactly. And we will see, and it's clo stronger, closer to the planet. And we will see that actually it has good things. No, not not just at the pole. No, from from North Pole, like all around, all around, because the exactly, exactly, and we consider being just one big magnet, okay, with an approximation, because the lines are getting from one pole, like similar to the experiment that we saw with that uh, iron powder, going out from one pole and coming in into the others, okay. And then they those lines are much more concentrated. We do see more lines closer to the planet. Then as we go away, it's like, let just follow my, my lead and look at my fingers, okay? No magic, I promise. So it's like this. Then I do have the second one. But as moving away in this direction, the lines is going to be like this. No, no. They don't repel. This is north and south. So in here I do have a lot of lines. But look what I'm doing. As I'm going far away, I do have less. And this one is... Yes. And they stay far away. And so we do have this that is less, less powerful as we move away from this. Okay? It's one of the tools that they used, yes. Right, that's, and that's even something that the, yes, they, you, they do have a nature and to navigate exactly as we do. And they know that they have to go north and south. Why they don't go east or they go north and south? Yes. Uh, it's a ferromagnetic material, yes. No, 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 it's just, uh, we don't know exactly what's the, what's the reason and why there is this magnetic field, but actually it's more, I can show you some videos next time, like some kind of videos, like a, a more animation, about the um, dynamo effect that we don't have inside the planet. Dynamo, maybe. Well, dynamo effect. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, sorry, sometimes my Italian takes over. Very little I can do. <laughs> but I'm lucky that you're smart enough to get my mistakes so, and correct them immediately. But uh, so the that stuff is generating some current, and we can see that some we will see that currents are capable of generating even magnetic. But let's take it for granted. It's there. I don't know why it's there, but it's there. Okay.
Yes, but that's uh, but that's part. Yes, yes, that's a, that's a tool. Then the reason why it's happening, exactly, it's for food. But then, in order to find food, they get a better and be they got a better and better technology. And this, the other way around, because exactly. But that's it's a tool. Like uh, I need to hit and I need my tools to survive. It's almost the same. And yes. Yes, but that's obviously that has some biological concepts in which obviously conditions from where they migrate, place A, place B, makes their life easier, right? And they obviously follow uh, the food. The food that they follow moves in a certain manner because this is, everything is interacting. And so we don't have large currents that brings the food and force the food to move. Those, we don't have some, those currents because some particular conditions do, due to the temperature. And yeah, yes, exactly. So, even bees, they have the, like, uh, apparently they use some uh, magnetic sense to actually navigate. There are, like, several things that we copy from nature, okay? And, for example, like, uh, bats, they're blind. But we use their technology, or we, not we use their technology, we try to replicate their technology through the use of the radars, okay? And, uh, or the sonars. Or, or dishonors in that particular case. But the principle is the same. They send a signal, the signal is bounced back, and according to the way it's bounced back and the travel time, they can locate an object in a different way than we do. We use our eyes and different kind of senses, they use that. Like as some other animals, they have some other senses more developed than, uh, than ours, right? And uh, but it has to do with biological. Now, it's true, yes, but it's true that all the biological reasons in general are driven and they, and they are com almost controlled by the environmental conditions that, at the end of the day, are controlled by other large. And uh, they don't have any interactions, but then we need to look at this phenomenon scale by scale and uh, with the right scale. So if we look at something on one scale and on the other and so on. That's why even nowadays it's even more important and something that uh, it's obsessing me almost. <laughs> it's the multidisciplinarity of it. I strongly believe it's convenient for me because it's uh, the, easiest, <laughs> the easy way out that not everyone can know everything. Right, and there's no matter how we study and how much we study. If I take myself, I cannot get knowledge of everything or a deep knowledge of anything. Right, that's why even in science, interaction, society, the multidisciplinarity, it's uh, it's a must, and the interactions. And you understand why I said from my own benefit. So I, at least I have an excuse. Oh, I don't want to study this anymore. There's someone, but. Joking about that's uh, really, really necessary. And everything is connected, either if we like it or not, but that's the, that's the way it is. Okay. And uh, there are also some uh, even finer living objects. We're talking about bacteria, so something that is very, very small, very, very simple as an organism. Not that simple as the, as the viruses, but quite um, simple as well. That uh, even in that particular case, they use magnetic field as a sense to navigate. Okay. Um, magnetic forces. What we said before. This is uh, our magnetic field.
Here's applications. Okay. You can write this in a computer. They use those information store in way of that signature. Might recall some device like the one up there, right? In which we had audio cassettes, right? The um, old uh, recording uh, audio data. Those were magnetic stuff, right? Instead, the, how do you call it? The, the tape recorder, no, but it's like the one phone is in it. There. Exactly. That didn't work on magnet, right? That one was a different story, right? Because that one had a needle, and actually there was a certain path recorded and scratched on the surface. Okay. And the magnetic, it's a difference. It's almost the same, but the path is given by this magnetic signature. And also, it's not that common to be used now, the magnetic strip underneath the, the card, but that's a magnetic signature. And that's the reason why the gentleman before was actually saying, never place this near a magnet, because this is a magnetic material. And this material, if I place something which is bigger, it will override. So it does its job. It overrides. So it's different set of information. Okay. And information is over, whatever. And the reception. Even because the magnetic, the magnetic field. But now the credit cards and stuff, it's not any longer working with the magnetic bar. And most of them, they're working with the chip. Okay. Yeah. Um, yes, they, they still use it. I think they are still, uh, but I mean, this one is much more secure. And uh, obviously, there are like some other reasons and uh, security issues and whatever. Uh, where? Sorry? For what? No, no, no. Normal metal, no. Unless that normal metal is magnet. But if there is, if it's not a magnet, it's, uh, it's not harmful for that. For what? Oh, I. 